Hey everybody. One of my favorite games that I like to teach students to code is Pong. There's something about it that is a lot of fun. Uh, it can be a simple game to code, but then you can get really, really um, intense with it and you can expand on your game by adding two players and different variables and all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's such a fun game to make and I find that my students really enjoy playing it. Um, so uh, I wanna share it with you. Um, if you are coming to this video from computer science class in one of my classes, uh, welcome. You know where the notes are if you wanna follow along. Uh, and if you just happen to come across this video, hopefully you learn something new about uh, scratch coding. All right, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do, see this sprite number one, this cat, let's get rid of it. Now we're gonna start fresh, nice and clean. Okay, we're gonna add a sprite and we're just gonna take the ball and we're going to now program our ball. Um, when I'm playing these types of games, I like to do as much as possible interacting with the game on the, or using the keyboard, I should say. So for events, when we push the start key, or sorry, the space key, we're going to start the game. So I want my ball to point in a direction of 45 degrees. So here's point in direction 90. If I click on 90, I'll see this wheel come up with all the different degrees. You can either go um, and find 45 that way, or you can just type it in the box there, okay? And forever, I want this ball to be moving at a speed of 10 steps, and if it hits the edge, it is going to bounce. So if on edge, bounce. Let's test it out. Hit the space bar, and there goes the ball. It's moving and bouncing off the edges and, and moving at a speed of 10. Awesome. Okay, next thing I want to do is I want to head over and I want to create a new sprite. This is going to be my paddle. And I'm pretty sure 3.0 has a paddle and it does. Excellent. We're going to click that and we are going to program this paddle. So again, I'm going to start the game uh, by pushing the space key and we're going to put this in a forever loop. Um, when I push the left arrow, it's going to change the um, on the x-axis by negative 10. And then if I push the right arrow, it's going to change by a positive 10. So if I am pushing or um, the left key is pressed, so left arrow key is pressed, then we are going to change x by a negative 10. Okay. If, however, the right arrow key is pressed, so in sensing, right arrow is pressed, we are going to change x by 10. Okay, so let's test this out. Hit the space bar, and we are moving. Okay, the paddle is a little too high. We're going to fix that right away, and, and the ball is not interacting with the paddle, which is not what we want. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my paddle and move it down towards the bottom of the screen. We're done right now for the paddle. Let's go back to the ball and let's get the ball interacting with the paddle. So under control, sorry, um, events, again, when we push that space bar forever, I want the ball that if it's touching the paddle, so if touching and it's defaults to mouse pointer we're just going to switch it to uh, into sorry switch it to paddle we are going to turn by 180 degrees and we'll see what happens there we go it's interacting with the paddle okay so that's not too bad but let's make this game a little bit more fun okay we are going to create a variable so that every time we touch the paddle, the score goes up by one. So click on variables. We're going to make a variable and we will call it score. And you can see it pops up here on the top left, but you can really, you can move it wherever you want. Okay. So if it's touching the paddle, if the ball touches the paddle, I want to change my score. So not my variable, but my score by one. So let's see what happens here. 
So you can see that the score is moving up. So the game is becoming a little bit more fun. Okay. Let's add an area that if the ball touches, the game is either over or the score decreases. So we've got our backdrop here. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on the backdrop tab. And we are going to change this color to red with no outline. So if the ball touches this area, let's go here. If the ball touches this area down here, um, we're going to program it so that the ball, um, the, the sorry, the, that the ball, if it hits the area, the score is going to change by a negative one. So when we push the space bar, uh, we are going to be in the forever loop that if it's touching the red, so sensing color red, so touching, now it's set to purple. If I click on that, there'll be a mouse pointer, or sorry, an eyedropper tool down here. Click on that, and then we can choose exactly the red that we want. So if that happens, we want to change our score. So we'll go back to our variables. We want to change our score by a negative one. So let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm at score two, three, let's see what happens when we hit the red. Oh, too much negative two. So it went through, um, it went through the red, and it took away from our score. So we're going to fix that by having it turn 180 degrees, and then change the score by a negative one. So let's try this. There you go. So it touches the red and it changes the score by a negative one. Okay, we can clean up this code because we've got three of them starting um, three scripts starting with space, but we can combine these. So I can take this one because we already have a forever loop here. So I'll take the if then statement of the searching for the paddle put that there. Then I'll take the if then statement for the color. And I'll put that there. Then we can delete these. So we've cleaned up our code a little bit. And let's see what happens. There we go. And that is a really basic introduction to how we can make just a, a simple version of Pong. There's all kinds of things that you can do from here on out. You can make it a two player game, you can change levels using variables, you can increase the speed every so many uh, times that the ball hits the paddle, really the possibilities to this are endless. One last thing that we're going to do is we're going to save this, I'm going to call this computer science pong notes because I'm going to uh, use this in class with you guys, and we'll click file, save now, and there you go, one player pong.